people to see our values living out in our community and, and seeing our community give back to us. Um, next, we're going to sh actually talk about a st another story uh, that involves one of our caregivers. This is Gail Jones. She is our specialty clinic manager. And <coughs> Gail had a vision to make sure that babies born in our community and maybe the state of Alaska soon would be able to have a safe place to sleep. Um, one that would make sure they got the right start. And so she took an idea that came from Finland and ran with it. And now it's grown into a community-wide effort and like I said, state hopefully soon. So. Well, as Misha said, my name is Gail. And I brought um, two of the ladies that are helping me with this project from Ketchikan Public Health Center. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly. I'm a nurse. Um, I'm new to Ketchikan, so I'm really excited to meet everyone here. Mm -hmm. And I'm Tonda. I'm also a nurse at the health center. Well, you know, it's amazing hearing the stories um, that we've already heard and the stories that are coming. I've only been here three years, but it's the community is so close here, and everybody wants to reach out and do something. Um, here in Alaska, there are over 11,000 births per year. And among native Alaskans, it's discovered that there's a rate of 9.2 deaths per live birth, which is about 50% higher than the national average. And for those that are um, not on a roadway, such as many of our patients that live off island, the rate goes up to 80% for them. So it is very high. So we started looking at what can we do, and the other thing we noticed um, when I started here was in the public or in our clinic that a lot of our patients didn't have everything they needed to get started. So two years ago, we started a clothing exchange closet, which became very popular. Well, then we started looking at how can we really address some of the needs in the community? How can we address the problems that we're facing? And last year, there was an article in the newspaper that came out, and the statistics for this showed that in a 2010 statewide survey looking at 53 infants, infant deaths from 2010 to 2013, that um, out of 53 deaths, 25 were definitely preventable, and up to 49 were possibly preventable. And we started realizing that losing one infant life that was preventable is one too many. So we started looking at how we can reach out and do that. And as we did research, we found that in Finland, 75 years ago, right after World War II, they were facing similar problems. There was no place for the babies to sleep, so they were um, putting them in their own beds, they were cohabitating with them, there was a lot <coughs> of problems they had. So they started a Finland baby box. And along with education, they've been able to reduce their rates. They have one of the lowest rates in the world now. Mm -hmm. So we decided, how can we do this? So we started the Little Alaskan Dream Project. and. In that, um, one of the things we did was we created stickers and we started realizing that we also have um, the problem of not being able to read, not being able to speak English. So we developed tests that actually have the pictures along with the words to kind of reinforce all of this. And then I started reaching out to the community and these ladies have been great. Um, along with these ladies, the funding of the box, we started reaching out, and the community has been really great about that. First Bank has donated uh, $5,000 seed money. Then the uh, hospital um, gift shop gave $1,500. And now, as part of the solstice, I just found out that it's going to be one of the featured um, items at our uh, summer solstice. And for those of you that don't know what that is, that's our big foundation uh, campaign in the summer when we have a, a big gala. But one of the great things is that in the community, I also got help developing the program, and these ladies helped design the educational program. Yeah, so we're from the Public Health Center, as we said before, and when Gail brought up the baby boxes and um, her idea behind the project and what we're going to be doing, we're so excited to be able to help out. Um, it goes right in hand with what the messages that we have, the education we already do to, for women, and now we have um, something else, uh, a way for them to implement all the things that we're trying to educate. So this is um, this is wonderful, and creating the curriculum was, uh, was a lot of fun, and I just kind of wanted to go over a couple things that, that it goes over. So it really touches the things Gail just uh, pointed out. We also want uh, patients and clients to really understand what is sudden infant death syndrome. Why is what we're learning so important? 
and, um, and how real is this? It, it's a real thing that's happening, it's preventable, um, there are things we can do, and um, education is important. It's important to listen, and um, we're also going to give some resources that can help people out. So we talk about risky behaviors, um, so that obviously includes the unsafe sleeping conditions, that also includes um, um, alcohol and drug use, and ways that um, more dangerous things happen around babies and sleeping, taking naps, the suffocation, when people are drowsy, when they're under the influence, they do not make the best decisions. And um, so how can families, how can we decrease the risk um, for these possible I mean, um, deaths? Um, and then we're gonna talk about the safe environment. How can we create this? And that's what's gonna be great. The baby box is gonna be there, Gail's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. We're able to show people the actual, um, what a safe sleeping environment looks like within this box. Um, also pictures, you know, we've got a full curriculum with the um, PowerPoint, but they're able to see um, um, what it looks like, which is a really simple area. And also find the ABCs alone, on their backs, in their own cribs. Um, I think parents wanna buy a bunch of stuff and it actually increases the risk, so we kind of, um, are able to show them uh, what is this safe sleeping environment look like and how um, and how do we create that um, and then of course uh, adding other ways that we can reduce their risks so keeping baby healthy you know the well child checks um, really good tummy time breastfeeding we want to um, pacifiers which also the baby box comes with these awesome things in there um, it comes with the pacifiers we've got the one onesies um, overheating is another thing that can increase the risk um, so we also teach about that, you know, not putting too much on baby, even if we're in Alaska and it's chilly out. Um, so things like that. Um, and then Tonda has another, the other part of our presentation. Yeah, and while we have them there, it's a great time to start talking about another issue, which is the period of purple crying. How to comfort a child um, when they're in that period between uh, two weeks and four months where the crying is unexpected, where it is, um, they resist soothing. And that kind of dovetails right into um, shaken baby syndrome mm -hmm. and how to prevent that and to teach these young mothers that we're getting a hold of or first time mothers or any type of mothers how to develop the coping tools that they need mm -hmm. and to be prepared for this period of purple crying and be prepared for finding ways to get relief. And we, it's great, we um, have these dolls that we use to teach that when you shake the baby, it shows where it damages it on the baby, the doll's head, and it's really neat. So it's a great time to get these mothers in there and add some extra education as well. Well, and the really cool thing about this is it started here, and I uh, reached out to um, the state of Alaska and the Safe Sleep program there, and it has become a pilot program for the state. And so now um, I've been contacted by quite a few other communities that are also starting programs. And then it just kept growing. And um, as it grew, I've been contacted by actually other countries, and Canada is starting a program, <coughs> Bangladesh and Dubai are also looking at starting programs, and it just, it's not just something that's in our community, it, it's also on a national level, they ask you to join a, uh, a national organization to help prevent uh, SIDS, and it's just amazing how it's growing, and the great thing is, like I said before, you know, one infant death that was preventable is one too many. And together, all of us have joined together to um, save babies one box at a time. And I've handed out some material just for you to kind of look at. And one of the really cool things that we're going to be doing this week is, or next week, we have a class. Before. Yeah, yeah. Our lunch class. So. Mm -hmm. And the, the first box we gave out to the 2015 baby, New Year's Eve baby, or New Year's baby. Mm -hmm. And it was really well received, and it was a lot of items. And we've kind of had to change it a little bit to, as, as we've grown and learned, we've changed some of the items. And this <coughs> is based upon the Finland box. Um, the Finland box is wonderful, but we also found that we wanted to add first aid kits and some things that weren't in there. And they actually don't have this, the safe sleep sack, which was really great. So there was a lot of things to it that we've changed. And, like I said, I couldn't have done it without everybody's yeah. help. The collaboration is great, and um, you know we love to collaborate with Peace Health. But now this is an option for providers. We can both suggest this and and really come together. So, um, and that's the way. That's how we get the word out to the community. That's how we educate. So, I'm very thankful for the project, Gail, and uh, we're happy to talk to you guys. Thank you. Thank you.